Hey there my good buddies, how you doing today? I'm going to show you guys how to beat Rotwick, one of the new maps on Kingdom Rush, on the Steam version. I'm going to get three stars for you guys, and we're going to do it in no lives lost. Alright, so what do you got going on here? First off, I have to explain to you guys that this is a pretty decent walkthrough, but also, obviously, you're going to need to do some stuff in between. You know, you need to use your reinforcements, you need to use your rain of fires at the same time, and even though you can put the towers in the exact same position, the gameplay will not be the exact same. At least very doubtful that it'll be the exact same. If you use your rain of fire two seconds too early or two seconds too later to use it wrong once, it could be a completely different game. But at the same time, I really don't see you guys having very many problems. It's, it's a pretty simple map. I think, you know, once you get to level two and level four of this new series, you're actually going to have quite a bit more problems than this level. This one's actually pretty easy, if you ask me. So, yeah, obviously, the first thing you want to do is I'm actually using the hero Hacksaw, I believe his name is. Hacksaw is really, really good. Uh, mainly after level 4 versus mainly the strong guys. He's not really that fantastic for this map specifically because there's not that many really, really strong guys. But in the future maps on this uh, Blackburn Castle series, he does get really, really fantastic for that insta-kill reason. And you guys will see that uh, throughout the series. You guys will see how amazing he can actually get versus some pretty ridiculous guys. So what I did was I actually started off with a third tier bombard tower right in the middle there because I felt like almost all the enemies will actually funnel through right where my barracks guys are. They're all going to go right through there and your bombard tower is going to shoot forward towards them and hopefully explode all of them in that location. What you're also going to want to do is make sure you get an archer tower in the very bottom down there, where they're all going to leave on the right side. Uh, you want to make sure you get an archer tower there, because you know what? Some random freaking skeletons are going to pop out of the graveyard just above that archer tower and start running through to the right. Now, this is a post-commentary, which I actually think post-commentaries tend to turn out just a little bit better for me talking. But at the same time, it's not quite as fantastic, because I can't click on a guy and be like, oh, is it this much health left, and, you know, like, tell you guys, oh, this guy has mad resistance, or this guy has that. Because I don't know everything. I know most things when I'm dealing with the game, but of course I don't know everything, especially because this is a new game. Now, the first thing you're probably going to notice about this is that there's a lot of freaking zombies, and there's a lot of skeletons, and pretty much nothing with any resistance yet. You know, we don't have any ar we don't have any armor, we don't have any magic resistance, so we can obviously really, really easily rock some of these guys. We have freaking zombies run running right through here. What are we going to do? Oh my goodness. Well, luckily enough, Hacksaw is going to take them all down. Now, personally, I am not a huge barracks guy. I, I don't like using the barracks very often at all in Kingdom Rush. Uh, in fact, I kind of hate them almost. I feel like they're they're not very useful in most situations, and if you do want to make them useful, you have to spend so much money on them, it's almost unworth it. So there's the upgrade I'm telling you guys about. It's actually Hacksaw's upgrade uh, once he gets to level 4. Once he gets to level 4, it's an insta-kill, and it, it's good that it's not on level 1, because I think you do really, really well if you started off on level 1. Now, every single one of these these uh, levels is 15 waves, and each one of these 15 waves is fairly long. There's not that many that are just, like, really, really quick like that. There was a lot on the regular Kingdom Rush uh, levels, but in this one, it's, it's way different. So one thing that I normally do in the game is I normally always build Archer Mage. I'm doing something completely different here by going with Bombard Towers and Tesla Coils. Oh my. So the, the, one of the main things you want to probably get first is your Tesla Coil. Get your Tesla Coil up nice and quick. Uh, once you get that guy, it's going to be amazing group pop and power. There is a pretty decent difference between the Tesla Coil and the Bombard Tower, or the Great Bombard Tower, which is the right-sided right upgrade for the uh, fourth tier uh, Bombard Towers. And... Uh, it's pretty sweet. I mean, I, I like the Tesla coil a little bit better than the Bombard Tower. And there's the main difference is, just so you guys understand this, is obviously there's different upgrades for it. Like the Tesla coil does, you know, less less damage to gigantic groups of guys, but more damage to more concise groups, which is usually what you're going to be fighting. For example, if you got four, five, six guys right there, the Tesla coil is going to bounce in between and, kill, and shoot all those guys. I think there's, I think it's six as the max. It might be five. And uh, when you get the Bombard Tower, though, the Great Bombard, if you get that guy all the way up, especially if you get cluster bombs or something, you can shoot it and the explosion can hit 60, 70, 5,000 guys if they're all in the same spot. If you stalled them really, really well or something, you could, you could shoot all those guys with one of those explosions. And that's pretty much the main thing about the Bombard, to, or the Great Bombard, that would be amazing. I think it's called Great Bombard. Dwarven Bombard, I think that's what it is. 
I forget the name. You guys know what I'm talking about, though. Just the big, split, the big cannon. The big cannon with the cluster bombs and dragon launchers and stuff. Uh, I'm actually more of a fr Frontiers guy. I, I, I really haven't played Kingdom Rush in a long time. I actually just came back here so I could play this Blackburn Castle stuff. Because I know you guys wanted a quick walkthrough for these things, and I really do enjoy Kingdom Rush. So, uh, I decided to come back here. I'm actually used to thinking th thinking about things like battle mechas and stuff. Which, that's one good thing about Kingdom Rush is, even though it's a new game, they didn't actually f go too far away from what they're normally used to, because you could easily just change the game 100% and just make it completely different. They didn't do that. They kept most of the same towers, you know, all four same main towers. Uh, most of the upgrades are pretty much the exact same. You know, your magic is a little bit stronger, your archers get a little bit stronger. Fourth tier tower is pretty much the same, but a little bit different. Uh, for example, the main thing that they changed was actually the artillery towers. They made the bombard towers just, uh, uh, I suppose a little bit better in Frontiers. Not that they're bad in this game, but they, it seems like they're just a little bit better in Frontiers. I tend to spam them a lot more in Frontiers. So still just a lot of low-level guys, you guys can tell. Level 6, what do we got going on? What's the strongest guy we've seen so far? <laughs> a zombie? <laughs> For a skeleton lord guy? Whatever those guys are, pretty ridiculous. But now you can tell, oh man, we're having some problems down in the bottom there. We got skeletons up the wazoo. They're coming out of that little spot right there, and your archer tower can't even deal with them. So you have to actually use your reinforcements and stuff, and you're going to be able to take them down pretty easily as soon as you get that. Now, versus these wargs, which are usually a pretty reasonable problem for us, your Tesla coil and bombard tower should just take them down. Should just chop right through their health, and they will slowly all die. In fact, not even slowly. They'll die pretty darn quickly. Uh, beyond that, I don't even think you need to upgrade your your uh, barracks any more than they already are. You know, keep a, keep a low-level barracks. Just keep them there, just because extra guys every once in a while, that can always be nice. And then uh, if you re and then also, it actually does help out a little bit, just because your reinforcements will keep throwing spears. You definitely, definitely, definitely want your reinforcements to throw spears, rather than run up on guys and start hand attacking them. Because the hand attack will stall them, but the spears will do more damage. And the spears are definitely much more effective. And we usually what do you want to do? Cause more damage. Also, another key thing that you can do is I noticed this after uh, playing it a few times, is that if you put your reinforcements behind guys, they still throw spears forward. I always thought the spears would only go... Uh, backwards. You can only throw spears like backwards towards enemies, because you never really see anybody attacking backwards. You always see guys attacking the first guys. So it's kind of just interesting for me to see that. I don't know why. I just, I wasn't expecting it. <laughs> That's the best way to put it. I just wasn't expecting it. So a lot more zombies coming in through here. Again, just weak guys. What do you got to do against the weak guys? Get things like artilleries. We're getting the artilleries pretty darn high. I mean, of course, the uh, magic is definitely nice to have, and the uh, ranger tower definitely nice to have for these stupid skeletons that pop out every once in a while. Nice to have it, but it's not even necessary. Uh, and I, what I decided to do is, because I felt like more guys were going to funnel through right in the middle there, I decided to get a bombard, and I wanted to get uh, some cluster bombs and stuff as well for the gigantic groups of zombies that are going to come out here. And then hopefully the Tesla coil will kind of just clean up the rest of them. As you can tell, crap loads of skeletons trying to cheat right through and just run right through my defense. I'm like, oh my goodness gracious, skeletons everywhere. But the, luckily enough for us, the skeletons are fairly slow and fairly easy to kill. I mean, yeah, they do have a reasonable amount of health, but still, they're not that bad at all. Yeah. One thing that I think you might want to do is actually think about switching your mage tower and archer tower positions. Because if you do that, you might be able to get a arcane wizard with teleport, and as soon as you see any skeletons, just teleport them into your Tesla coil. That's one thing that I can think about doing just a little bit differently. But overall, I mean, this way works perfectly fine, as long as you're willing to use a couple of reinforcements every once in a while. And then what you want to do is actually start just spamming whatever towers you want. At this point, you, it's not like you got the game in the bag, but you got a really nice setup, my friends. You got a really nice setup. If you got two high-level artillery towers at this point in the game, game set match point it's like tennis we're just throwing up balls and spiking it on people's face nice because like i said there's only weak guys in this there is no really strong guys at all and that's why you know hacksaw is not that great in this one but it's still okay now one thing that people tell me is that i talk way too much i i just babble and blabble on and on about stupid stuff that doesn't even matter with the game and you know what I can agree. 
I, I babble just a little too much, but it's okay, you know, some people like it and some people don't. If you guys don't like it, it's cool, I understand, just, you know, don't watch the video or mute it or whatever the heck you want to do. But this is the way I like to go about it. I like people to learn things along the way and just learn about things and also make things exciting. You know, this game, if you just watched it for ten minutes straight, you'd probably get bored. I know you guys probably have seen a lot of walkthroughs on YouTube where people just play the game and they don't talk or commentate over it or explain what they're doing. And you might just start to get bored or just skip to the end or skip to certain parts to see what towers they have where. And you're thinking that's the main thing you have to worry about. Whereas me, I'm like, no man, you gotta do this, you gotta do that, you gotta get all this junk up off of wire, and then maybe you'll learn some things about the game. Because I am... I don't like to I don't like to brag by any means, but I am a pretty seasoned veteran at Kingdom Rush. I've played Kingdom Rush uh, all the way through on medium and hard and heroic and iron challenges, both on hard. And then I went to Kingdom Rush Frontiers, did every single map on there on medium and hard, and then I also did the challenges on medium and hard. So then I pretty much know what's up with the game. You know, I know how to beat most of these missions fairly easily. Uh, I, I have noticed that this is one of the hardest games that I've played so far, and I think actually Blackburn Castle was a very good difficulty. It was really perfect. Like, uh, if I had to play it on hard, I'd, I'd have a hard time with that. But I think I could manage it. On medium, it was like getting it, you know, no lives lost was a little bit of a challenge, but once I found good tower spots and I realized, oh, I gotta use my reinforcements in a certain way and get two early artillery towers instead of just one, then I was like, oh, okay, that makes sense. Now I can actually start rocking these guys, and that's exactly what happened. We started rocking them. So once you start seeing these these guys, they come out on level 10. These are the wear rats. And the wear rats are actually one of the first guys that artillery does not work fantastic against. Um, they also disease your guys, so if you run up and they like start attacking your guys, they get diseased and they slowly die over time. Which was actually kind of a bad move on my part. Uh, I, my original th thought process was, hey, I want as much stalling power as possible right in front of that Tesla coil. So I can kill all the guys right in front of it. And, you know, allow my bombard tower and the Tesla coil to just do a crap load of damage. That was my original thought. And then when I actually started playing the game, I realized that if any of the were rats started attacking my ancient golem, he got poisoned or whatever the heck you would consider it, and he'd slowly lose health over time until he pretty much died. And it was very upsetting to me to realize that I spent $350 on this ancient golem, and the only real reason that I got the sorcerer's mage was for that ancient golem. Now, of course, the Sorcerer's Mage, by any means, is not bad by itself, but, you know, you usually get a certain upgrade for a certain reason, and that's why I did it. I did it for the, like, fifth-tier upgrades, I guess. You know, if I can go on the left side or the right side of the highest level you can get. Uh, because the Sorcerer's Mage, the good thing about them is you can actually make them... The main thing about them is they put an aura around the enemies that allows you to get rid of their magic resistance or their armor and you can attack them with pretty much anything and they'll do more damage. So that's the good thing about the Sorcerer's Mage. The bad thing about it is it does less damage than a normal tower. You'd much rather have an Arcane Wizard for damage if you want to damage those guys. And that is the key. That is the key to it. But like I said, my Genshin Golem just died too quickly and he didn't really stall too well. I mean, of course, it wasn't, ter it wasn't terrible. It wasn't terrible by any means. He still survived most of the time. He still did a pretty decent job at stalling. But there wasn't enough strong guys to get in his way for uh, him to have to get in the way and just, you know, fight for a really long time so we could do some damage to him, which is usually what you want to use him for. Moving on. What do we got going on? Well, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, well, we're gonna, we gotta get more bombard towers. So I got another Tesla coil on the bottom there, which I actually was thinking about getting other stuff. I wanted to get, you know, like maybe some archer towers down there. But I said, screw it. We got such weak guys coming through here. We just need to spam the Tesla coils and spam the bombard towers, and we're good. Also, another reason why the Tesla, why the Tesla coils are a little bit better than the bombards is because the Tesla coils can directly attack flying enemies, which I don't think I've seen just about any, like strong or hard to kill flying enemies in uh, this Blackburn castle. Now there are witches, but I wouldn't consider them hard to kill. They're, they're not the normal flying guys. They don't follow the path. They just kind of do a swirly whoop de whoop through the map and then eventually they end up leaving through like the normal place that things leave. But it was just weird to see the witches because they, they didn't really attack in the same way that they normally do. They don't kill your guys. They stop to shoot a, shoot a little magic bolt at them and they turn them into frogs. What the heck, man? Why are these witches turning my people into frogs? It's not cool, bro. It's not cool at all. 
Some more skeletons and stuff, no big deal. Actually, whoa, look at all those skeletons on the top there. That is a lot of skeletons. But when you actually think about it, you're like, oh, you have three bombard towers? So you're gonna take them down. And you're gonna take them down really, 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 really easily. What else could we do? Could we get some, uh, some, uh, cool stuff over here? Yeah, I mean, I suppose we could if we want to. We can get, like, this healing aura or... Um, you know, maybe even get this upgrade as well, the Shields of Valor, or even the Holy Strike if we want to. The Holy Strike's kind of cool, but I don't even really think we need it, plus we didn't even have the gold at the moment, so who cares. Actually, this is kind of a good upgrade to get, is the Wrath of the Forest. That'll actually help versus the Scorpion, not the Scorpion, the Skeletons quite a bit, because the Skeletons will get stopped in the range of that guy, and it also hurts them a little bit, by the way, you know, big groups of guys. Uh, the Wrath of the Forest is kind of good. It's kind of like a mini Bombard Tower. It does like a pretty decent amount of damage to those guys, and it also stalls them for a few seconds. So if you got a little bit of extra time to attack things, it's always a good way to kill things. Always. But you can tell with all these Skeleton Knights, you'd think that they get a little bit further than they are, but nope. Absolutely not. And we're just going to say, you know what, we're going to probably just... What, Rain of Fire them and start the next wave, or do we even need to use the Rain of Fire? No, we don't even need the Rain of Fire. These, these Skeleton Knights are so easy to kill anyways. I was actually not thinking that billions of rats were going to come pouring out so quickly, though. That was definitely a surprise. But rats are so easy to kill in this game. Honestly, they're not bad at all. Except, except when you see them on level 1 really, really quickly, and you don't have any uh, good arch towers or anything, you're probably going to get close to losing life. They're, they're reasonably quick, and that's probably the biggest problem with the rats. Reasonable amount of health, reasonably quick. They're kind of like a wolf, but a little bit stronger, I suppose. Alright, still more were rats. We're already on round 14 to 15. Wow, guys, and we're not really having any problems at all, are we? We haven't seen any guys even get remotely close to the end. I agree. You know, you always think, you always want to think, okay, not only do I have the spot beyond the beyond the Sorcerer's Mage and, like, that location, I also have the Ranger's Tower, but then you also have, like, a really solid little lane there where you can easily build reinforcements or even move your hero over there to help stop these guys easily do that. But we're just stopping them in their tracks. They're not even getting remotely past, like, the middle of where I thought they, that they might want to get to. And a third Tesla Coil is going to indeed come out. The Tesla Coil is cool as well because you can also get quite a bit of range on it. It can actually, like, attack out of its range. That's kind of cool. As long as there's guys within its range, it can spark to different guys. And with Wave 15, let's just send it right out. Who cares, man? Just take them all down. See, there's probably going to be a lot of things popping out of a lot of random areas. And that's one thing that I've noticed that they did really well with Blackburn Castle and uh, the four four levels. Is that they didn't just make it so guys popped out of one area or two areas or maybe even three areas. They made it like eight or ten areas. I don't even know how many they could possibly come out of this level. But it's a lot. It is absolutely a lot. The only thing I'm glad is they don't put anything like out of the range of your towers. Like if they had like, uh, see that little house on the bottom right? kind of near where the uh, blue flags are. If they had guys popping out of there and I'd use reinforcements on them, I'd be I'd be angry. I'd be angry that they did that to me because that would just be really annoying to have to do that. And if I lost a life because of that, it'd be very upsetting. Uh, but even these skeletons are a big problem as well. You know, those guys themselves are already bad enough. So, oh my goodness, were rats. Ridiculous were rats. Are we going to be able to take them down? Well, actually, not as well as you might think. You know, we actually had a couple guys almost leak through here, but luckily enough for us, we had a rate of fire, and there's going to be a few guys left that we are going to take down, and we should end up winning this game. There actually might be a few more. Yep, there they are. More were-rats, but at this point in the game, who cares, broskies? Who cares? The reason why those were-rats actually got through was actually because they diseased all my guys, not because they even were even strong enough to actually kill them. They just diseased them, and then they slowly die over time, which is kind of upsetting. More skeletons, more little few rats to clean up, and we are going to take this game, my friends, pretty darn easy. I mean, overall, a, a good starting difficulty for the map. You know, you got to get, you gotta get used to the game, and you get into the game, and then just slowly you'll start winning. So one, two, and three stars. That is all I'm going to have for you guys today. Hopefully you enjoyed. As always, thanks for watching, and if you haven't subscribed yet, oh my god, do that right now. Why the heck haven't you? Have a delicious day.